Hello everyone! Today we are going to finalize our talk about biochemistry with one additional method – chromatography. Earlier we showed how various qualitative reactions can help you to check the presence of proteins, lipids or carbohydrates in different solutions. Chromatography, on the other hand, allows you to separate and take a closer look at visible and colored molecules, such as complex cell pigments. Moreover, we will study some specific feature of cell pigments. Let's start. So, let's take a look inside the Verbranches box, which contains UV light, Petri dish, hibiscus tea, gloves, chromatography paper, spoons and pasta pipettes, bottle, beakers, mixture of acetone and alcohol, solvent for camera, and other reagents. Sodium hydroxide, Sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda, and acetic acid, also known as vinegar. Firstly, we will talk about a group of special pigments called anthocyanins, which give purple, blue, pink, brown, and dark red colors to many flowers, some fresh fruits. For example, pomegranate and hibiscus tea. Anthocyanins are soluble in water and stain the solution when they are extracted from fruits. Moreover, the shade of the color is mainly depend on the pH level. A solution of anthocyanins in an acidic medium has a red color. In a neutral medium it is blue-violet. And in the alkaline medium it is yellow-green. Let's start the experiment. Brew some provided hibiscus tea leaves in the bottle with warm water for 5 minutes until it extracts the pigment. Next, we will check the behavior of anthocyanins in the solution with different pH levels. For that, we will add different reagents, which change the pH of our reaction to acidic, mildly basic and very basic. Add several drops of vinegar to the first beaker and the pH of the solution will change to acidic. In the second beaker, we will not add anything and it will stay as a control with a natural pH level. To the next one, we will add a bit of sodium bicarbonate to make pH more basic. And to the last one, let's put sodium hydroxide, which will change the pH to very basic. Such an easy way of color regulation led to the widespreading of anthocyanins in nature, especially throughout the plant kingdom. Plants are highly dependent on colors. For example, in a very selective relationship of insect pollinators and flowering plants, insects usually focus not only on smell, but also on shape of color. And now let's talk about other natural pigments. However, in fact, leaves pigments are presented not only by one type of molecule, but rather a group of them, except for chlorophyll, which is presented in two forms called alpha and beta, there are also other pigments, named xanthophylls and carotenoids, and today we will use the chromatography method to study all these pigments. Chromatography is a method of separation of different molecules in a mixture. The mixture is dissolved in a fluid which carries molecules of interest by capillary action through a filter paper. 
First of all, let's prepare the bottle with solvent where chromatography will take place. So now we will fill the bottle, which we will call a camera from now on, with already prepared solvent, up to 1 cm. It is important to keep our camera closed in order to prevent evaporation of liquid and to better maintain the separation of vapors. In order to extract pigments, we will gently smash leaves and mechanically damage the cell by grinding. Then we need to dissolve the pigments in a solvent so they can move through the filter paper. We will add approximately 1 ml of our acetal ethanol solution to the damaged leaves and mix it gently. Next, let's put a start and finish point on our filter paper. The starting point should be higher than the level of the solvent in the bottle. Also, mark by pencil a finish point on the same distance from the opposite end. Take one drop of solution and carefully add to the start point. Try to take only liquid and avoid big particles. Let it dry until the liquid fully evaporates. You can use a hair dryer to speed up the process. Repeat the procedure three or four times and each time dry the paper. Quickly put our paper to the box with liquid with a start point at the bottom and finish at the top. In the beginning you can also bend the paper for better stability. The solvent is moving throughout the paper under the capillary effect and dissolves our dry pigment. As it will move up, molecules slowly attach to the paper in dependence to their solubility in the solvent. Even after a couple of minutes, you will see the separation. Wait approximately 10 minutes until the upper phase reaches the finish point. After 10-15 minutes, let's check our results. From the start point, we can see chlorophyll B is olive green, chlorophyll A is blue-green, xanthophylls are yellow, and carotenes are yellow-orange. Moreover, you can examine your chromatography paper and pigments under UV light in a dark room. Just be careful and do it really quickly, because even a safe UV light and the torch can damage your eyes. You can see that chlorophyll and carotenes are fluorescent molecules and when viewed under UV light, glow red. Try yourself to do chromatography on some colorful fruits, orange peel, flowers, etc. But beware that soft fruits contain a lot of water, which can affect the solubility of pigments in our solvent. Thanks a lot for being with us and see you next time.